If I can face my neighbors and my family talking about the issues I'm talking about in the way that I talk about them, then I know that I'm really truly being authentic. I'm not attracted to these controversial issues because I like to like light fires. I'm attracted to them because I want to actually help people reconcile with them. When I think about why I do what I do, which is write and speak and publish books about feminism and make documentaries, it's in part because it would be harder not to. I think that when we dig down and actually get the stories of people who've experienced abortion or rape, it becomes a story that we associate with and relate with as opposed to an argument. An argument, you kind of get to get on your side and you marshal your, your thing you want to say against it. Stories aren't arguments and that's why they're so incredibly valuable. When I work in controversial issues, I really try to go for story. I don't want to hear anonymous sources. I want to hear and see faces. My name is Jennifer Baumgardner, and I'm the publisher and owner of Daughter Press. This is me. I always say I've been a feminist since birth. I was born in 1970, and even though I have a kind of real traditional looking family, my parents were, especially my mom, were actively dealing with the politics of the times. My mom had never thought about feminism and then suddenly she had three kids and a husband and had already changed her name. And these ideas landed in her brain and they had reverberations for her. They made her question a lot of things. And it was powerful for me as a, as a kid seeing her. Tell your story. When I was around like 12 or 13, my older sister was raped at 14, when she was 14 at a party. Somebody came up to me and said, Oh, Jenny, your sister's a slut. She had sex with someone. My sister was treated terribly in the aftermath of the sexual assault, and we didn't use that word at the time, but I saw what happened to her. She was treated terribly by girls, and she was preyed upon by boys, and it, hadn't, it influenced me seeing this. Just a total blaming of, of me. Um, and that's the worst part. And then when she was in high school, she got pregnant and had an abortion. And even though I had these really pro-choice supportive parents and seeing that my sister didn't feel safe telling them because she was so embarrassed and so ashamed, I saw firsthand how powerful the silencing and the messaging is around this issue. Change the narrative. I moved to New York City in 1992 when I was 22, and I got a job at Ms. Magazine. Around that time, I wrote my first book with Amy Richards. It's called Manifesta, Young Women, Feminism, the Future. This is Katie Cappiello, uh, one of my dearest friends. I think I told you and Amy that I would carry your book around like a Bible. Like it was the most worn and torn book on my shelf and I carried around with me everywhere and it was the first I think exposure to feminism that I ever really had. I kind of got the bug of actually making books and doing the, the business side and the very first book I signed up was Not My Idea, a book about whiteness, the Anastasia Higginbotham book. One of the things that I think doesn't get said enough in the feminist sphere that you have always said to me is that it's okay to need to make a living. In the process of your feminist work are building a life and that you need to be able to sustain that life. And there's nothing wrong with doing badass, hard-hitting, radical, thoughtful, feminist-minded work. Working mom. My sons just see me, they know I make my living as a feminist. I knew that my parents were trying, and I try to do that with the kids. I really want them to see, to feel like there's no question that's off limits. You know, they don't have to perform some sort of woke version of themselves, and they're allowed to ask questions, and they're allowed to differ with me politically. We just have lots of lots of conversations. Any book I publish, I talk to them about. I think it's an amazing time to be a feminist, and it's an amazing time to be alive. We believe Christine now! We believe the name of it! We believe Christine now! I certainly don't think Trump created the misogynist, racist world that we're in. It was always there, and we're peeling back a lot of layers of denial. I love America. I feel like I'm a real booster, 
And at the same time, there's been a real wound to history and to memory, the way that we've talked about the U.S. What do we do? Stand up, fight back! A lot of things are coming to the surface right now. And while it's incredibly painful and frightening and ugly, it's really, really important to have this reckoning and this truth.